Okay, so let's restart the class. So, uh, to finish our section on the balance of payments and the current account, we're going to do, look at two case studies. One case study we'll look at very shortly, and another case study a little bit more longer. And we'll also use a case study in the second half of the course, because case studies are practical and they, they help us to understand what happens. It's easier to understand the theory when we're looking at the real countries or the real situation. Okay? So, in this case, we looked at the theory. We saw that for China and the US dollar, an important factor is the current account. Okay? We can see that US has a current account deficit and China has a surplus. So, gradually, the US dollar is getting weaker and the Chinese currency is getting stronger, right? But if we go and look, we look at Australia and Australia and Japan. The relationship, of course, China also has a managed currency regime, right? But if we look at Australian dollar and the Japanese yen. We can see that although Japan has a surplus and Australia has a deficit, it's not as straightforward, right? This is 100 yen for one Australian dollar. So this is, the Australian dollar was getting, was getting stronger because of the carry trade, right? Then we had the crisis here in 2008. Carry trade, what happened to carry trade? It stopped, right? So the carry trade stopped, fine went from 100 yen was one dollar down to 55 yen is one dollar. Okay? In a very short, this is just one month, right? Very short period of time, that's a very big change. So you can see the effect the carry trade has on the market, right? Then people start to be risk on again, carry trade starts again, right? And we can see that oh, since that time, the, the uh, People have been buying the Australian dollar. The Australian dollar has been getting stronger, right? Selling the yen. Yen has been getting weaker. So, just we should understand the effect of the carry trade, and we should understand what it means if we have a current account surplus or deficit. What does it mean for the exchange rate, the longer term? Okay, so then, uh, we should learn first about how to analyze case studies. It ha will help us, right? So I'll just we'll briefly do this uh, learning about case analysis. It may be useful for you in another class too, right? Or if you do a master's degree, or just any case analysis is just useful generally for any problem you have to solve. Okay. So first of all, we have to look at what type of case do we have? Do we have a decision case? So the protagonist. Do you understand the protagonist? Who is the protagonist in the in the movie Jurassic Park? Um, Do you know the name of the actor? Protagonist. I don't know his name. Right? But protagonist is the main actor. Okay, so the main actor in the case, they have to make a decision. Why? Uh, today we're going to look at that kind of case in Thailand. The Minister of Finance of Thailand has to make a decision. Okay, and you have to help him to make a decision. Or you have to advise them what decision should they make. So that's a decision case. Okay? Problem case, a business has a problem and you have to find a solution for the business. Okay? Evaluation case, not so common. We're just we're not really making a decision or solving a problem. We're just looking at why was the company successful or why did the company fail? So when we do a case analysis, I just showed you briefly how to read an article in The Economist. Right? How should you read an article in The Economist in English? Introduction, yes, introduction, conclusion, first sentence of each paragraph. If that paragraph was mentioned in the conclusion, maybe I need to read the paragraph more in more detail. Right? So if I do that, I'll get the main idea. I won't get some parts around the edges, right? 
So we're going to learn similar ways to analyze cases. First one is getting oriented. Do you understand orientation? Then identifying problems, then doing an analysis, and then actual planning. So this is very similar anyway in your work life. If you have something to do at work, right? You get identify what's the problem, you do an analysis, and you make an action plan at the end. Decide to do something. So consultants also use this way. Okay? So it sums up here briefly, we'll talk about each one. Uh, getting oriented. So this was a little bit like what I said for the reading, getting oriented, read the introduction, read the title, read the conclusion, right? So in the case, just quickly read the opening part. Okay, just to start, the introduction of the case. Flip through the pages. There's some pages, right? Just look through the pages. Look at the heading of each section. Do you understand headings? Okay, uh, then just uh, read the conclusion. Read the questions or assignment if the teacher gave you some assignment. So that's just getting oriented. Okay, so when we do this, we take a preliminary stab at writing what do we think? What type of case is it? Decision, problem, or evaluation case? And what is the main issue of the case? Do you understand the main issue? What's the main point? So if I read also the same for reading in The Economist, I read the introduction and conclusion, I already had an idea. What's the main point of this? Okay? So the same for the case, but we find out what's the main issue. We might be wrong. Later, we might find out we're wrong, but we have a guess. Okay. Then we try to identify the problem. So we read the, the case more carefully. Okay. Ask yourself, what's happening? What does this mean for the company? What problems can I see coming? Okay. So don't worry if everything is not clear. This is just the way it works. Right? Just go through the case, try to figure out in more detail what is the problem in this case. Okay. Uh, you can also bring outside concept into your analysis. When you're reading the case, you can say, do you understand framework? Yeah. Framework looks like this. So you learned a framework in the class just now about the current account, right? Framework is basis you put the top on. So the framework you learned is, if you have a current account deficit, you're Currency may be overvalued, and we expect it to get weaker. Okay? So that's a framework. So when you're reading the case, you can say, oh, I think I can. this framework is helpful when I'm analyzing this case. Okay? <coughs> so we had a guess at the main issue at the start. Now after we've read the case in more detail, we go back and see, do we need to change it? or just leave it the same. Maybe we were correct. So the next one, we identified the problem. The next one is performing analysis. Now, identifying the problem is important. Consultants spend a lot of time identifying the problem. Do you understand consultant? How do you say consultant in Korean? Consultant. Consultant? Is there a Korean word? No? Doesn't exist in Korean? Okay. So if the consultant is solving the wrong problem, they're just wasting their time. Maybe they spent one month, maybe they spent three months, maybe they spent six months in a company, helping the company to solve a problem. But if the consultant is solving the wrong problem, it's a disaster, right? They wasted all their time, six months. Now they have a good answer, but the answer is for the wrong problem. They didn't understand the problem correctly. Maybe they didn't talk to the boss of the company properly. The boss was telling them the problem and they said, oh yeah, that's okay, that's the problem, okay. Right? They went away. So they should have asked the boss more questions to find out what the problem is exactly. Okay, so it's the same for the case. We need, we need to find out what the problem is so we can know what we need to analyze. Okay? And where we need, otherwise we could be wasting our time later. So analysis is a word which means things we do with information. 
Analyze means things we do with information. We have information and we do something with it. Calcul it could be calculating, making a calculation. It could be comparing, comparing the information. Okay? It might mean putting together some facts to make a logical conclusion. Put this information and this information together, get conclusion. That's what analysis means. Okay? So we do this kind of analysis. It doesn't always provide definite answers. So business is not maths. Do you like maths, Suhak? Yes? In maths, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Is there another answer? No, but business is not like that. Business has different facts, different information. You can put the information together and get a different answer than she gets. You could be correct and she could be correct. Okay? There is no definite, sometimes there is no definite answer. Okay? So you be, could be frustrated if you're looking for just one correct answer. We have different types of analysis. We have qualitative and quantitative. Does anybody know the difference between qualitative and quantitative? What's the difference between quality and quantity? Quantity is numbers, right? What's quality? Yeah, is it good quality? Is it good? Can you use it well? So it's the same for information. Uh, qualitative information, we're talking about facts and opinions. So the CEO says that the company will increase its sales by 50%. That's the CEO's opinion, right? That's qualitative information, right? So facts and opinions, ask yourself what is fact and what is opinion, okay? So you make a list, make a list of facts and opinions but only facts and opinions which are related to the problem. Okay? So one of the things about case analysis is that there's a lot of information that we don't need. Background information. Baekhyun. Do you understand Baekhyun? Just background information, especially at the start of the case. Do we need to read all of that? No, we can even skip. We can see a heading and we can skip the whole part. It's not relevant to the problem. Okay? So we, especially in business, you have to learn to operate effectively, but also quickly. Do you understand effective or efficiently? Efficiently means quickly and also well. Okay? So you will find that some business person can make a report on the 50-page document in just one hour or two hours. Right? So they get paid a high salary because they can work efficiently and effectively. Okay? So some other worker, they get a 50-page document, they can just write a report, it takes them five hours, okay? So when we're doing the case analysis, we have to try and work efficiently, okay? Just the information that is relevant to the problem, not the other information, okay? That is what we need for our analysis. Uh, then quantitative, similar, just numbers, ratios. This may be more important in some cases. Some cases might have hardly any quantitative data that we, we might not see it, okay? Then we identify the useful data. Okay, you don't need all of the data. Here, avoid getting lost in the numbers. So like I say, this is a difference between experienced worker, not experienced worker. Non-experienced worker can get lost in all the data and the numbers, okay? Pulling out their hair, okay? Experienced worker finds the relevant data and forgets about the other data that's not relevant, right? That's just the big, big young. So then, after we identify the useful data, organize our facts together in a logical way, know when to stop, don't spend too long, okay? Then action planning. Action planning is another important thing that you need to learn how to do for your life and is also a very common fault of poor managers and you, you know new workers they don't do action planning does anybody understand what action planning is yes. do you do action planning if you have a meeting do you do action planning very good and maybe you will be the leader in the group, right? So action planning is, I could get together with you 
and we could have a great idea about our presentation, right? Oh, we're, let's do this and let's do this, right? And let's make this it'll be great. We were very happy we made a great idea and we both go home, right? <laughs> and we come back the next week, we're still very happy. And we ready for the presentation? Yes, yes. Okay, put in the USB with the presentation. What? Put in the USB with the presentation. I don't. Have, I thought you had the USB. I thought you were doing the presentation. No, I, you said you were going to do the presentation. What? No. No presentation. It didn't happen. Nothing happened in the end. No result. That's the problem if you don't do action planning, right? So action planning would be we sit down and we say, you are going to do the PPT slides by Wednesday, okay? I am going to research the information and send it to you by Tuesday, okay? Ideally, we'll even send an email to each other because people forget, right? You don't want to be here. You said, no, I didn't. You said, no, you didn't, right? If you have the email written in the email, it's clear, right? So that's action planning. So action planning uh, in the case is also important. Because we can say, oh, we understand the problem, we did our analysis, that's great, but how are we going to change it? What are we going to do? That's the point. The whole point is the action plan, right, at the end. So we have short, medium, and long-term steps that are going to carry out the recommendations about what we need to do to solve the problem. We get some, there was one athletics coach in Ireland, a famous athletics coach in Ireland, somebody said to me, He's very good at telling people what they're doing wrong, okay? But he can't tell them what they should do to get better, right? He just tells them what they do wrong, okay? But he has to be able to make an action plan. How are they going to change to get better, okay? So the same for the case. You need to make an action plan. What steps do we need to do, okay? So this is an approach for action planning that you can use for your life. Step one, identify the task. What do we need to do? Gather information, make the PPT, make the presentation, write down the tasks, analyze and delegate tasks. Who's good at making the presentation? Who's good at doing the PPT? Delegate. Do you understand delegate? John, names, John, Mary will do, John will do, Paul will do. Okay? Next, double check with schemes. Schemes is checking that your plan is comprehensive. Space. Do we have the correct space? Cash. Do we need any cash? Do we need any other helpers? Do we need any equipment? Okay, maybe we need a pointer. What materials do we need? Do we need to ask somebody else expertise? Right, we need to ask a question to somebody else. Systems. So maybe not in the university, but more in the work life. You can use this checklist, okay, to make sure that you're covering all of the things you need for your action plan. It's called the schemes. Can you remember schemes? Acronym helps to remember. Space, cash, helpers, equipment, materials, expertise, systems. Right? So this is not on the test. This is just, uh, I'm just explaining about how to do the case study to help us with the class, right? So you don't need to learn this for the exam. It's just uh, helping. So, uh, <laughs> action planning, you don't have to have just one solution, right? You two guys could say, well, there's this solution and this solution. Often consultants do that in the company. They say, well, I made two solutions. You can, you're the boss, you can decide which one is better. Right? But I'm giving you an option of this or this. It doesn't have to be just one, but you should recommend one. Okay? So you can check here is some case study where they already did. So do you have any question then about analyzing the case studies? Doing case studies. These four steps, getting oriented, identify the problem, perform the analysis, and do action planning. Okay. If you had to analyze a case which was five pages long, with three pages of graphs, how long do you think it would take you? It's five pages long, in your language, not in English, in your language. It's five pages long with three pages of graphs. How long do you think it would take to analyze the case study? to get an action plan about what we need to do to solve the problem. 
Thirty minutes. One and a half hours. One and a half hours. Anybody else? Reading the case, five pages with three graphs. How long would it take? No, you don't need to read everything. Find the important information. Okay. Make an action plan based on your analysis. Okay, so maybe an hour and a half or something like that, right? Shouldn't take five hours. Okay. Thirty minutes might be a bit optimistic. <laughs> but then again, if you are person who's been working in the accountancy or consultancy company for 20 years, I'm sure you could do it in 30 minutes, right? We have that kind of experience. And companies want people who can do it in 30 minutes, right? Sometimes when you're joining the company, they'll give you some test, like assessment center, where you have to do this kind of project. They'll give you a report, and you will have one hour to make that kind. If you know this system, it will help you, but other people might not know that system, right? Do you know about assessment center? If you want to get a job with the accountancy or consultancy company, you go to assessment center, right? It means they assess you compared to the other students. You have to make a presentation, right? Or you have to have a group interview. Do you know what I'm talking about? Very